Hello everyone, Mr. Stearns here. We're finishing up right now lesson seven in unit two. Okay, unit two is ancient Egypt and the Middle East. We're working on the geo or the lesson seven, geography and early settlement of Egypt, Cush and Canaan. Today we'll be talking about Canaan, section three. So let's go right to lesson seven, section three. This is, of course, a teacher page. Let's go to the textbook so we can see your point of view, okay? We've done the introduction. We talked about the three really important environmental factors. Then they started to go into looking at specifically Egypt and Cush as kind of one specific area because they share the same three key environmental factors. That's why they lumped them together. Remember that, okay? Now, since we've talked about Egypt and Cush yesterday in section two, we're gonna go and take a look at Canaan. Canaan is totally different than Egypt and Cush, obviously, because they didn't lump Canaan into this group, right? So that's the whole point uh, of today's lesson, comparing Egypt and Cush's three environmental factors, not river, valley, um, deserts, flat area, vegetation, papyrus, reeds, stuff like that, to what's available in Canaan, okay? That's the whole point of this whole lesson, okay? You need three factors as you decide where you wanna live. Usually civilizations look at water, vegetation, and the lay of the land or topography to make their decision. Of course, you're looking for a place to live where you're gonna live <laughs> and not die, right? So you kind of have to deal with what the environment gives you. That's the whole point, okay? So let's go to section three and then we'll hit the summary right away. And which leaves us to um, finish up everything this weekend for lesson seven and get ready for our quiz on Monday. Don't forget there's a video about that quiz down below, okay? So take a look at that. It'll only cover lesson seven. And I'm just checking to see if you did your work in your ISN because I'm going to let you use all the notes in your evidence folder and I'm going to let you use uh, your ISN work. Okay, so it's not checking to see if you know it. I'm checking to see if you did it. Do you see the difference? Okay, here we go. Boy, that was a lot of talking here. Here we go. Let's, of course, take a look at our pictures. We're going to be talking about modern day Israel. It was called Canaan. It connects with modern day Jews which connects to ancient Hebrews, okay? So notice that you've got water around here. There's the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, there are deserts. So it's different than Cush and Egypt's area, okay? Cush and Egypt are down over here. All right, let's take a look and see if there are any other pictures. See, this exactly tells you what I'm talking about, comparing and contrasting Egypt to Canaan, Egypt and Cush. Okay, and these are things that I would like to see you be putting in your evidence folder here. You've already done the front cover. You have a pyramid on the front. On the inside is where I would do these notes from this lesson. I would put Egypt and Cush together and compare it with Canaan's three environmental factors. This will really help you on the quiz, okay? The reason you have a social pyramid on the front is because I believe as your teacher that lesson nine is more important than lesson seven. And I wanted you to key in on that lesson, okay? So let's take a look at this stuff and the main points so we can get ready for Monday's quiz on lesson seven. Here we go. First sentence, first sentence, lots of examples. First sentence, second sentence, I wonder why. I wonder. First sentence, examples, and then they wrap up this section and kind of give you a clue as how it connects to the essential question. Are you seeing the pattern here? Are you? Main point, main point, sometimes it's in the second sentence. Every once in a great while, the last sentence. Why? And why do they use that last paragraph to wrap everything up? And how can that last paragraph help you on Monday? Think about that. Are you going back and rereading that last paragraph before the quiz? Doesn't that wrap up that whole section? 
Why aren't you reading that? And rereading it to make those third person connections from your first person practice. That's what I'm trying to get you to switch. All right, here we go, Stearns. Um, environmental factors in the early settlement of Canaan. The ancient Israelites settled in Canaan, a diverse land along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Canaan's physical features and environmental factors made settlement easier in some parts of the regions than others. In other words, there was some flat land near the Mediterranean Sea, good for farming, but you can see right here in the topographical map or topographical map that there's mountains right here, mountains over here. So that's gonna have a real impact. Here, you can't really farm easily. You're gonna have to herd because animals don't mind walking up hills to get grass. All right, here we go. Physical features of Canaan. Canaan's physical features included plains and valleys, hills, mountains, deserts, and bodies of water. In the west coast, in the west, coastal plains bordered the Mediterranean Sea. To the north, the Lebanon Mountains steeply rose from the coast. The southern part of this range gave way to the lower hills of, the, of Galilee. And that connects to many of your religions. If you think about this, you're going to be hearing a lot of different towns if, you're a mono, if you celebrate monotheistic religions, because this is the area that probably connects to your religion. Okay, The Jordan River flowed down from the mountains, mountain range through the middle of Canaan, heading south through the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea. The land around the narrow river valley included hills, grassy slopes, and mountains, perfect for herding. To the east lay the hot, dry Syrian desert, safety, keeping neighbors away, and mountains, again, keeping our enemies away, excuse me. To the east lay the hot, dry Syrian desert. In the southwestern part of Canaan was the Negrev Desert. Rain soaked, rain soaked this area during the winter months, supplying the Negrev with more water than most deserts receive. I think deserts to be classified as a desert have to have seven or six inches of rain a year or less. But you could look that up to be sure. Okay, most deserts get not even close to that. Okay, but they're saying that this one does get more water than most, but is still considered a desert. That's important to remember when you're thinking about why people chose to settle there. Okay, and in my opinion, I think religion has a lot to do with this too. It's the only settlement, I think, that religion really impacted and, and was one of the key factors. Okay, and you can take a look at that as we get into monotheistic religions. All right, environmental factors in the human settlement uh, in Canaan. Okay, here's what you should be putting in your evidence folder on the inside. Okay, you can tell that they're gonna they're setting you up. You've already studied Egypt and Cush. Now they're gonna tell you what the three factors are of Canaan, and that's what you want to put down here. So on the quiz, you can compare these two in third person. See what I'm saying? Okay. So if you do that, you'll be all set for the quiz. In Canaan, as in Egypt and Cush, water was a key environmental factor. In very ancient times, the wet, fertile plains near the Mediterranean Sea were farmed. The Mediterranean also enabled traders from many lands to visit Canaan. Other bodies of water also played a role in the settlement of Canaan. The Sea of Galilee was actually a freshwater lake. That's critical. It had plentiful fish and fertile land was nearby. Another large lake, the Dead Sea, was too salty for anything to grow in it, even plants, thus its name, Dead Sea. The area near the Dead Sea was hot and dry, making it unsuitable for farming and a lot of other things. You can actually float if you were to go swimming in the Dead Sea. If you just, you could float. There's so much salt in it, it would hold your body up. How many of you have ever been to this area? I know a lot of my students go to Israel and visit this area. Okay. The main source of water was the Jordan River, right? Here's the Jordan River. All of the water comes out of the mountains running down. Okay. In very ancient times, the wet fertile plains near the Mediterranean Sea were farmed. The Mediterranean also enabled traders from many lands to visit because they used it as a highway right here, okay? Other bodies of water also played a role in the settlement of Canaan. The Sea of Galilee 
right up here. The Sea of Galilee was actually a freshwater lake. It had plentiful fish and fertile lands was nearby. Another lake, the Dead Sea, which we said was too salty. Way to reread that, Stearns. Good job. All right, so let's go back down to where we really are. The main source of fresh water was the Jordan River. People living near the river hunted, fished, and farmed along its banks. However, unlike the Nile, the Jordan River did not flood on a regular basis like the Nile. So its valley was not as fertile as the Nile River Valley. Now that makes sense. And people could trust and rely on the Nile River to flood at a certain time, which means they could plant crops at certain times, which means that they were stable food supply. You see what I'm saying? They couldn't, they couldn't actually count on the Jordan River flooding. And sometimes it flooded so severely that people would just die. And sometimes it would be so weak, it'd just be a trickle. So it wasn't as consistent. You see what I'm saying? That's the stuff you need to have in your evidence folder when you compare and contrast Egypt and Cush to Canaan's three environmental factors. Do you feel me? All right, let's see if I can find the right spot now. Canaan's varied topography greatly influenced patterns of settlement or where people chose to live. Farmers found it easier to live on the Mediterranean's coastal plains near the Jordan River. So you see where the mountains stop? Right about in here. In other areas, the hilly land and dry soil made growing crops pretty problematic, guys. As a result, many people, including the Israelites, ancient Israelites, became herders rather than farmers. The environment just was more conducive or supported herding more than it would support farming for a stable food supply. Herders tended flocks of sheep, goats, cattle, donkeys, and even camels. Unlike farmers, herders were nomads wandering from place to place in search of good land for their animals to graze. People found it hardest to settle in the mountains and deserts. Mountainous, mountainous as well as dry desert land were both difficult to farm. Still, some people did live in these area guys. They were called nomads. Nomads sometimes herded cattle and camels in the Negev, Negev Desert, well, and the Syrian Desert too. Here we go, here they kind of wrap it up. Are you paying attention? Do you see how they wrap it up here? And they kind of clue you into what's coming up on the test. In general, in general, Canaan's hot, dry climate discouraged abundant plant life. Vegetation was most plentiful near the Jordan River. Some areas had small forests, while others had only short, scrubby plants. Grasslands were common, though the herders made good use of them to feed their animals. Do you see what I mean? Do you, can, you, can you picture what you're going to draw right here? And then do you see how you're going to compare Egypt and Cush's three environmental factors? Because they're different. That's what I need on the inside. So now what I need you to do is to work on this. Have this done by Monday. Make sure you go down and you finish your ISN either electronically or you could go to, let's see, 50, oh yeah, here it is right here, guys, 55, page 55. You can do it electronically or right in your ISN. It's your decision. Okay, well, this wraps up lesson seven, except we should probably take a quick look at the summary since you have a quiz on Monday. What do you think? Let's see what's important and what, what the authors are gonna put on the quiz. Lesson, main points. There are no main points because they're all main points, right? In this lesson, you learned how three environmental factors influenced the early settlement of ancient Egypt, Cush, and Canaan. Environmental factors. Three important environmental factors are water, topography, and vegetation. These factors had a huge impact on where people chose to live. Does that make sense? Did I, did I say that enough? <laughs> Early settlement of Egypt and Cush. Oh, here they go. They're setting you right up. They're telling you exactly what to do. What would you draw? In Egypt and Cush, most people farmed in the fertile Nile River Valley. So you're gonna draw a picture of the Nile River Valley. The Nile River provided fresh fish, so you want fresh water, excuse me, fresh water shown in an area that was mostly desert. So you should probably show desert. 
the topography or the lay of the land, the height of the Nile River Valley made the land good for farming. Why? Flat. It's flat. So show that it's flat. Okay. The valley also supported useful vegetation like reeds and papyrus. Show that in your drawing here so you can compare it with Canaan's down here. And here's what they say right here to draw. Look, for Canaan down below. Early settlement of Canaan. In Canaan, the Jordan River and the Sea of Galilee were important sources of fresh water. Much of the land was too hot, dry, or hilly for farming. As a result, many people, including the ancient Israelites, were herders rather than farmers. Herders were nomads who moved from place to place to find grasslands where their animals could gaze. So there you go. That's lesson seven in a nutshell. They're trying to get you to look at the three environmental factors and then compare them. Okay, Egypt and Cush are lumped together because they have similar, um, similar factors. Canaan is separate because it doesn't really connect at all um, with Cush and Egypt. So that's what they're trying to get you to look at. And that's what people use to decide whether they want to stay there. Okay. As I said before, I believe religion had something to do with Canaan as well. And that's the only civilization that I would probably say that as of right now, based on the evidence. All right. Well, good luck on Monday. Um, we're going to have a quiz. It's open evidence folder, so you can use your drawing. This drawing should really help you if it's very detailed on the quiz, because I'm going to ask you to compare Egypt and Cush to Canaan. That's the whole point. Okay. You may also use all of your ISN pages, so make sure that you have them done and corrected. Now, notice you now have an option. Are you just going to write down the answers? Is that fair? Or are you going to actually do the research and do the journey of learning? There are two ways to get an A. I hope you remember that. And not all A's are equal. How important will your A be? Think about it. Have a good weekend. See you. Bye-bye.